Good morning. Uh, today is Mormon. Nope. It's Ether. Ether chapter 2, verses 13 through 25. A little tired this morning. Uh, so anyways, in, in these verses, uh, they travel for years, they get to the sea, and the Lord chastens the brother of Jared for three hours for not praying to him in those four years. And then he uh, commands him to build barges that are tight like unto a dish. And then we get into the, the whole thing where it's like, how are we going to breathe? And the Lord says, put a hole in it and unstop it, stop it, that sort of thing. And then how are we going to see? And he says... Well, we haven't got to that part yet. But he says, how are we supposed to see? And then the Lord says, why don't you tell me? So anyways, um, it's going to be a short one again. And it says, so it's talking about him being chastised. And it says, how can we be assured that our manner of calling upon the Lord meets his approval? <clears throat> so... If you recall, he, I mean, I just explained it, but, you know, he hadn't, what does it say? It says he chastened him because he remembered not to call upon the name of the Lord. So he forgot to pray. And it says, how can we be assured that our manner of calling upon the Lord meets his approval? So you're wondering, uh, he forgot to call upon the Lord. Okay, so... Is it the frequency of praying, the intent of his prayers, the hearkening to the inspiration to pray, the degree of gratitude expressed, or some other lapse we know not? <clears throat> it is not unprecedented for prophets to be chastened. The prophet Lehi is chastened for murmuring. The prophet Joseph Smith and his counselors in this dispensation are also chastened for not following the word of the Lord as required. Let us never forget that chastening is of the Lord and done because he, he loves us. If we cannot bear chastisement, we are not worthy of the kingdom. Let us remember <clears throat> to pray frequently and express our gratitude with authentic devotion and never forget our God. So, um, I liked the, the question there that says, how can we be assured that our manner of calling upon the Lord meets his approval. Um, we've heard that re vain repetition is not good. You know, uh, it says, pray always, have a prayer in your heart. So you just want to, I just want to take into account, what are, are my prayers meeting his approval? Am I going to be chastised for not praying properly? or with real intent, or, you know, things of that nature. Um, and then in verse 15, it says, I will forgive thee and thy brethren of their sins, but thou shalt not sin any more, for ye shall remember that my spirit will not always strive with man. Let's see, it says, Can it be that the Lord, in his extended three-hour conversation with the brother of Jared, chastening him for not calling upon the Lord, is establishing a lasting precedent that will resound through the corridors of time? Worship the God of the land in prayerful devotion, or bring the judgments of God down upon your shoulders. Surely this episode, preserved in the records and minds of the people, will be ever present as a reminder of covenant loyalty and obedience. <clears throat> Some remember and prosper, others forget and decline, even perish. Let us be among those who remember. Uh, I think that speaks for itself. You know, pray and, 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 and prosper, forget, and perish. It, uh, I'm not good with words this morning. I don't know what my problem is. Anyways, moving on to the part where 
uh, the brother of Jared asks, how are we going to see? So the brother of Jared asks, how are we going to breathe? And the Lord tells him what to do. Then he says, how are we going to see? And the Lord says, what do you want me to do? Not in that tone though. Um, and we talk about this a lot in this certain chapter, you know, I think this is one of the most talked about, um, spots in the book of ether. Like this is the one that people focus in on for some reason. I'm not quite sure, but, um, it says, what a remarkable instance of the Lord's honoring of the principle of agency and individual creativity. The Lord knows what to do, but he wants the brother of Jared to use his own ingenuity. Remember that the Lord expects us to do our part and use the abilities he has given us. He will inspire, direct, strengthen, and empower us to do all things after we have exerted our own abilities to the maximum. We recall the advice that the Lord of the Lord to Oliver Cowdery, who fell short in his desire to translate the sacred records. And then this comes from DNC 9, verses 7 through 9, and it says, Behold, you have not understood, you have not you have supposed that I would give it unto you when you took no thought save it was to ask me. But behold, I say unto you that ye must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask me if it be right, and if it is right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you, therefore you shall feel that it is right. But if it is not right, you shall have no such feeling, but you shall have a stupor of thought that shall cause you to forget the thing which is wrong. Therefore you cannot write the, that which is sacred, save it be given you from me. As we will see, the brother to, brother of Jared devises a brilliant and practical strategy for providing light within the ocean oceanic barges, and the Lord will ratify and honor his choice. So I like that it says that um, it's a remarkable instance where the Lord is honoring the principle of individual agency and individual creativity. I really like that part because... I feel like lately I've been using a lot of my abilities, my gifts and abilities, my creative talents to keep me occupied during this insane time, which I have been very grateful for. Um, so I liked that aspect of it instead of the way that we always talk about that story. All right. I love you all. I'll talk to you later.